Mother's Day, the one day a year we set aside to celebrating our sweet moms for all the ways they're so nice to us. Bringing our breakfast in bed, going to church together, buying her flowers and other girly stuff, giving her a little quiet time, making her a nice picture or a card, taking her to dinner, and maybe, just maybe, letting her play Jedi Night Fighters from the planet Typhon with us. Or, you know, whatever she wants. Anything is fine, really. It's your day, Mom. What should we do together? Hey, kids. It's Pastor Andy again. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. So, as you can see by the video we just watched together, it's Mother's Day week. Whether you're watching with us on Saturday or Sunday or some other time this week, Sunday, May 10th is Mother's Day. And I would like to challenge you this week to think of some ways that you can do something special for your mom. Maybe that's helping her in some way. Maybe it's writing her a letter or making her a card or making her something special. Whatever it is, I want to challenge you to make sure that you do something really special for your mom to let her know how much you love her. Maybe you could even make her a list of reasons why you love her. There are so many things that I love about my mom. She is so special and she always makes me feel that way too. You know, the thing I love the most about her is that she loves Jesus so much and she encourages me to love him even more. She makes me want to love Jesus more because of how much she loves him. And she is so amazing. She, at work, she just encourages people. She does so many things to let people know that she cares. And she always has something encouraging to say to me. When I'm having a rough day, she knows just how to make me feel better. She gives the best hugs when I'm with her. And we have lots of things in common. I just love that we get to do craft projects together or that we can just sit and talk about life. And she is such a good grandma to Oliver. Those are just a few of the reasons why I love her so much. So as you can see, it's super easy to come up with reasons why we love our mom. So maybe you could make a list this week of reasons why you love your mom. But whatever you do, kids, just make it really special and your mom will love it. Now, I also want to remind you, this week we are doing a Read to Your Stuffed Animals Challenge. And as you can see by the picture on the screen, Oliver and I did that this week, read his Bible to his stuffed animals. So this week our Bible story comes from the book of Acts and it's in Acts chapter 16 verses 16 through 40. And we want you to send us pictures, send us little video clips of you reading the Bible to your stuffed animals. And if you do that in one of our upcoming Kid Life services, we will feature you. How cool would it be for you to be on one of these videos with us? So send us your videos. You can email those to me. You can post them on social media. Have your parents, of course, help you with that. And if you do, again, we'll feature you on one of our services. That'd be so awesome to do that. But most of all, we just really want to encourage you to read your Bible every single day, to spend more time learning about God. Because every second that we spend in His Word is never wasted. It's a really amazing thing for us to spend time in God's Word because it helps us to learn more about Him and about who He is and about how much He loves us. So get those Bibles out this week and read to your stuffed animals. Now, we have a lot of great things for you today. We're going to sing together here in just a minute, sing about how awesome God is and how he is on the move right now, how God is doing amazing things. And we're going to have a game, and Miss Peggy has a great story to tell us, and we have our Bible story today. But before we get there, I want to read to you our verse for the day. And this will kind of set the tone for what we're talking about today. And it is from 1 
Peter chapter 3 and it's in verse 15. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it. So today we're going to be talking about the hope that we have in Jesus and the fact that God wants us to share that with those around us. And even when we're not physically with a lot of people other than our family right now, we can still share the good news of Jesus with our friends and our family, even though they're not with us right now. So I want to encourage you this week to think about that verse. Think about the ways that you can tell your story, that you can tell how God has worked in your life, and that you also will be ready to tell about the good news of Jesus. And today in our Bible story, we're going to find out a great illustration that will help you guys to tell that story of the good news of Jesus. Are you guys ready? Let's sing together. And we have lots more things coming up after that. All right, sing with me, guys. Are you ready? Here we go. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move
kids, I'm Reed. You ready to party? Hey, it's me, Benji, and this is my friend, Banana Steve. Hey, kids, it's Pastor Mandy. So excited to be with you today. It's good to see you. Miss you. Hey, kid my kiddos, it's Miss Karen. Oh, it's so good seeing ya. Hey guys, it's Mr. Ryan. I see you guys today. Who is ready to play a bonkers game? Are you guys ready? All right. Kids, you're going to play with us at home, and we are going to play here together, okay? So I will call out our bonkers action, and you guys are going to do that with us. Are you ready to play? So get up on your feet. Here we go. All right, everybody, do a bonkers run in place. Go! All right, now, everybody, do the floss. Or you could do the floss dance. Either one is fine. All right, guys. Throw your hands in the air like you just don't care. All right, now. Stick out your tongue and pat your head. Now, reverse those two. Stick out your head and pat your tongue. And now, since we just all touched our tongues, let's do a bonkers hand washing dance. Here we go. All right, everybody, are you ready? It's time to hit the deck, go! All right. <laughs> All right, now let's do a bonkers bunny hop. Okay, guys, are you ready for our last one? Here we go. Go totally bonkers. Go. Oh, man, it has been great to be with you guys today. Have you had fun playing our game? Oh, yeah. All right. This is so boring by myself. I wish others were here with me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Good News Network. I'm your anchor, 37 time award winning, Chaz Pandemic. This is the Good News Network, real news, real good news all the time. And speaking of good news, despite the effects of the ongoing quarantine, families have been finding ways to invest time into their wardrobe development. Take a look at this story. Wow, you can really dance. Wow, you can really dance. He went, he went. They said we've both been dancing all this time. What a coincidence. Our big idea today is that the good news of Jesus is for all people, so we should always be ready to share why we believe. And that takes us to our next story. Good news does sometimes come out of difficult situations. And I'm getting a report about a man named Paul who 2,000 years ago was excited to share the good news of Jesus with everyone he could. He was so excited that he actually got himself into big trouble. No. 
I mean, big trouble. But Paul wasn't doing it by himself. He had help. As a matter of fact, let's go to our reporter in the field, Jennifer Quarantino, with more. That's not how a penguin acts. That was a chicken. Jennifer, back to you. That's right, Chaz. Paul was no chicken. Paul and Silas traveled all over telling people how they could be saved from their sins. And it made a lot of people happy, but it made some people not so happy. And they ended up getting thrown in jail. Back to you in the studio, Chaz. Oh my goodness, this is the Good News Network, and getting thrown into jail for telling people that Jesus loves them and died for them does not sound like good news at all. Surely there's more to this. Let's go to GNN's own Less Crowds in the Field with more. At around midnight, Paul and Silas were singing hymns and praying in their cell. <sighs> Everyone was listening to them. Suddenly, a mighty earthquake happened. It was so powerful that everything shook and everyone in it. Back to you. Uh, mm, wow, well, uh, thank you for that deeply compelling story, Les Crowds. The jail cells coming open during an earthquake sounds like good news for the criminals, but it couldn't have been good news for the prison guard. Let's hit this button and go see if Jennifer Quarantina has more. The prisoners were freed. The guard was finished. But Paul shouted out that the prisoners were actually still there. The guard was astonished, and he began asking Paul and Silas how he could also be saved from his sins. That is an amazing change of direction, and I sure am glad that it has become a good news story. And I also assume that Paul and Silas were ready to give an answer. Let's go back to our reporters in the field to confirm. Yes! They told him how to believe in Jesus and he and his whole house were saved! It was amazing! Back to you in studio! Yeah! Wow. That is an amazing story. And it is good news. Jail and earthquake. The prisoner set free. And the guard saved by the good news of Jesus. Compelling and deep. But the report continues. As a matter of fact, Peter, one of Jesus' friends, has something to say about this. You can read it with me in 1 Peter 3, verse 15. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Paul and Silas didn't have a Bible with them because it hadn't been written. They didn't have their parents or anybody else with them, and they really didn't have Siri with them to help. They had to have an answer ready for the hope that they have. They had to know the good news of Jesus in a way that they could share it. And as a matter of fact, right now, we've got a little bit of a tool to help you, kind of a bridge to illustrate what Jesus has done for us. Live in the field, is this the bridge, Chaz? No, Jennifer Quarantina, that's a car bridge, and it really doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Jazz, this is Less Crowds, live from the bridge tool you're telling everyone about. This is exciting stuff. Less Crowds, that's actually a hiking bridge, and also has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Hey, I'm sorry that our reporters in the field are so excited to share the good news. So hopefully they'll watch this part and all of us can learn a simple tool to share the good news and the hope that Jesus has given us. The first thing to understand is that we're us and God's God. We're not God and God's not us. Got it?
The next thing to understand is that the thing that separates us from God is sin. I and you and even Les and Jen have done things we're not supposed to do. And you know what? We'll probably still do a few more things that we're not supposed to either. And that separates us from God because he's perfect and we're not. As a matter of fact, I'll challenge you right now. Try for the rest of the day to not do anything wrong to not think anything wrong. Think about it. Obey your parents every time they tell you to do something. Be nice to your hard to love friends and neighbors. Think about it. It's almost impossible to imagine going through a day without sinning. So because of that, you and I cannot earn our way to God. This is where the good news starts. See, God loves us so much, even though our sin has separated us from him. So he sent Jesus, his own son, fully God and fully man, to the earth where he lived a perfect life and never sinned. And then he died on a cross. He died because some men were scared that he was powerful. They were amazed by his miracles and they thought they would lose their position of power. So they killed him on a cross. But he didn't stay dead. That's why this is good news. Three days later, he arose and he spent 40 days on earth helping his friends get ready to start the church that I'm a part of and I hope you're a part of. So you see, what Jesus did on the cross creates this bridge from where we are to where God is. Jesus created a way by removing the penalty of our sin so that we can get to God. And this is amazing news because it's not just one day later in heaven. It's right now, today, what Jesus has done and continues to do for me every day allows me to be with God right now, even here in this studio. So when we believe in Jesus and choose to follow him, the cross and what he did on it becomes a bridge that allows us to go from where we were to be with God. And this is why we get so excited and do all of the crazy things that we do. Much like Paul, we want everyone to know this good news. So let's go back to our reporters in the field with today's discussion questions. Wow, thank you, Chaz. That is good news. Now I have a question for all of you. After seeing that bridge, do you know for sure that you have accepted the good news? Press pause and discuss. That's a great question, Jennifer, and I've got a question for you. Do you think that you can draw the bridge illustration sharing the good news and the hope that you have? On behalf of all of us at the Good News Network, the Journey Today Show, and our friends at Go Curriculum, thank you for watching. Know this, that there's good news out there, and we're going to find it. I'm Chaz Pandemic. Until next week. Am I glistening? Oh, wow. Ah! Ah! Hey, kids. Miss Peggy here. Uh, isn't that bonkers what Paul and Silas had to go through? Well, I want to tell you, I'm hiding out in the spare bedroom today so that I can get this video done for you. But what I want to tell you about is some other people that have maybe had to hide out and that we think that um, Paul and Silas being in prison was, you know, over 2,000 years ago. Well, I want to tell you that it was just a year and a half ago, a little bit more, that Pastor Andrew Brunson was released from prison. After being in prison for two years, he was in prison and he was very scared and it was unknown whether he was ever going to get to see his family again. It was unknown whether he would ever get to be released, whether he would spend the rest of his life in prison. They, um, he was, a, he had been a pastor in Turkey for 25 years and then they came and arrested him and they were going to be going to deport him, which means send him back to the United States. But then they decided to keep him and they kept him for over two years. Even his wife, Noreen, was um, imprisoned for two weeks. And I just can't imagine being put in prison for no reason 
and that you you have to have that faith that um, God's going to take care of it. And Pastor Andrew said after um, one of his interviews that he said there was a God agenda and then there was a government agenda. And when God was done with his agenda, then he worked it out for his release. It's pretty, pretty cool that even though it was very scary and very unknown, that he had kept his faith in God and he kept um, going forward day after day, even though that was over, it was two years of unknown. I just want to say that um, that inspires me. It also makes me realize that I want to add more time for prayer for people who are suffering for Jesus into my prayer time this week. Would you like to join me this week and beyond in praying for missionaries, those who are struggling um, in their faith, and those who are being persecuted for their faith, might even be in prison, even now with that it's isn't that crazy? That's bonkers. And But you know what? God's love is even bigger, more bonkers than anything we can put up with. So I just want to pray with you today. So join me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love us with that bonker crazy love, Lord, that even when this world's agendas get so messed up and so out of whack, Lord, that you are still in control. You are sovereign. You have control and everything is in your hands. I just ask that you continue to care for these people that are being persecuted for their faith. Lord, I ask that you care for um, each and every one of us whenever we're in a scary or unknown or we're, we feel like we've lost all control of the situation. Lord, I pray that we would turn to you and rest in you and remember that you are in charge. Thank you, Lord, for the lessons this week. Thank you for all the kids and uh, their open hearts to hear what it is you have to teach us. And Lord, most of all, I want to thank you for sending your son. Lord, that's just bonkers. It shows how bonkers, crazy, and love with us you are. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, kids.